Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, consultant audiologist and director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video uh, using the Waxscape. So this is of a, a patient of mine um, who I've been treating for I think the best part of 10 years and they've never really had uh, such problems as they have uh, on attending this appointment where they presented with otitis externa. So they've always had a bit of um, non-occluding earwax. On occasions we've had to remove it, not necessarily because it's fully occluding, but it has been obstructing the auditory canal, so it's leading to acoustic feedback with the hearing aids. But this patient recently started swimming on a regular basis, and upon attending they kind of felt that something wasn't quite right with their ears, and it may be related to them swimming. So um, they had been getting water inside the ear and they've developed um, subsequently otitis externa. So they've got this really dry um, skin plugs, but on the periphery, some of the skin, the more silvery matrix has become a bit damp as a result. Um, so we've cleared this debris and obviously um, written to the patient's GP for some treatment. Now, this patient has got very sensitive ears, so it was quite a good procedure to perform with the Waxscape. Um, even taking ear impressions in the past has been quite tricky um, because the slightest compression contact with the, the canal wall can be a bit uncomfortable for them. More so their left ear, the left side which you'll see in a moment. So the idea is here, I've, I've already uh, cleared the occlusion so they could hear significantly better. I've got the major plugs of uh, debris and dead skin away. So I'm just trying to uh, mop up as much as I can. Uh, just want to avoid any contact with the canal wall. Um, so you can see there's a bit here on the right hand side. So I'm going to just be as gentle as I can. I'm using the fine end suction probe now. So if there is any contact, it's going to be less traumatic, uh, less uncomfortable for the patient in comparison to the um, 14 gorge suction uh, probe, which um, we typically call the Zolna in the UK. Um, also, when you're using the fine end with dead skin like this, um, you're going to minimise clarinetting. So clarinetting is when you suction dead skin and then it could violently flap at the tip of the suction probe and it can emit a very loud high frequency squeal, which is not only loud for the patient, but it's loud for myself as well. I think we did get a bit of clarinetting uh, in the left side. So we um, there's a bit of skin I was peeling away near the eardrum. So uh, there's only a little bit left. So we left that alone. You can see this patient's ear canal is very dry and cracked. So uh, moving forwards, we've given them uh, advice on water protection when they go swimming. Um, they have got some swim plugs, so they're going to start wearing those. But instantly upon removal, um, servicing of the hearing aids, and they did notice that they're having to change the wax card on a more frequent basis um, since they've gone swimming. So they were filling up with all this dry skin and wax. So just on the anterior canal wall, just a little bit there now. With the wax scope, everything is so magnified, so uh, in compa even comparison to an endoscope. So, so there's just a little bit more uh, debris on the anterior canal wall, which I think I'm going to try and peel away. I just reduced the brightness as well, because when you've got a lot of dead skin, it's very reflective. So I think it appears white and it can blur the view. So just by turning down the exposure, you reduce any reflections. So it's a little bit, I think I'm just going to see if I can get a little bit more from the anterior canal wall. So again, with the magnification, you can work very closely to the canal without making contact. Let's see if this skin peels away. I'm not sure it does, so I'm just going to leave it there. There's a little bit more there. Let's so you can see the precision we can work with, with the, uh, when you have the magnification. So we're now moving on to the left ear. So this is the ear that's very sensitive, more so than their right. So just going to go inferiorly, going to try to lift this off the bottom. So it just has this fungal appearance, this um, debris, for some reason. It just seems a bit woolly. There's no prolent discharge as such, which is more common with uh, a bacterial infection. So it may well just be fungal. So this patient will need to see the GP. I have recommended they use some ear calm in the meantime. So with the ear calm, it will just help to reacidify the ear. So with all the water, it can 
increase the pH level, which typically then leads to swimmer's ear, um, so bacterial infection, but there's no pain here, so it's a tricky one to be fully sure. Um, so you see the level of magnification, you can see all the hairs that are matted up against this. Because it's a lot of its skin, it's adherent to the canal, so it's going to peel it away. You've got to be careful on the left hand side, the anterior canal wall, it's a bit of a narrow section in this part of the ear. And this plug is in the last half of the ear canal, probably even the last third. So I'm just giving it these little wriggle movements to loosen this plug to mobilize it and I'm slowly so that's that reflection I was referring to so it's a bit more reflective this side is a bit more um, white silvery matrix so that's skin that's just recently dyed and shed and if we left this here alone that that outer layer will eventually be compressed into the core and it will oxidize and become dark and it'll be replaced by another layer of freshly secreted dead skin which is more white in appearance so this is probably in the last third now, this last plug. Just trying to get a suction grip. So getting that skin helps to remove this plug, which it did there. So we're getting, I think this week alone, we've had more patients with infections, otitis externa, secondary to water exposure. So, um, I had another child today, I think, um, in the left ear, which I'll, I'll try and upload in the next few days. It was a pretty short video, but they recently, they, they were going swimming this week and um, it's a school holidays and they developed an infection as a result. And indeed, their ear looked very similar to this. The, the, the surface of the canal is very dry, cracked. So you've just got the skin uh, on the posterior canal wall, so I've just reduced the brightness a little bit. I'm just going to hover over it and see if I can peel this away. So this skin is a bit more oxidised, it's a bit more yellow than the, the whiter skin. So what water can do, it can wash away natural oils and sweats produced by the ear, so sebum and um, an oily sweat, which is designed to lubricate and moisturise the, the surface of the skin. Um, it also prevents the internal skin from losing its moisture, so it acts as a hydrophobic layer, helps the underlying skin retain its moisture, and it also helps repel external water. But excessive water can leach that, those oils away, so um, it exposes the underlying skin, which then becomes dry and cracked. The skin then also absorbs the water, overhydrates and swells and cracks, which is what's happened here as well. So they've got this macerated, broken skin. So. It's just a bit of skin that we're peeling away. It's beyond the isthmus here. I think I'm going to zoom in in a minute. So you don't want to over zoom because if you over zoom, it can get a bit grainy the image. I think I get a bit of this away, but uh, I think we're also experiencing some clarinetting, so I kind of left a little bit uh, behind. So, yeah, I've just zoomed in and Again, that's the fine end suction tip we're using. I've just left that. It was, just, it was going to be quite hard to remove and we're going to get some clarinetting. And I said, this is very, very sensitive and it's going to be more sensitive now because obviously they've got this otitis externa. This is just a bit on the peripheral. Again, it's, you, there's maybe some evidence of hyphae there, which is, can occur with aspergillus otomycosis, but again, it may just be some hairs because the magnification, even the smallest hairs are, amp are magnified. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.